Okay, everybody, welcome back to this section. In this section now, we're going to take a look at our three electric guitars, and we're going to go through the process of, uh, of getting these things uh, all dialed in. So let's take a look here. If you remember where we left off in the last section, we had drums and bass. Um, and now we're going to start adding our electric guitars. So over here in green are our three electric guitars. And um, we are going to go ahead and we're just going to start. We're panning them hard left and right um, because they're playing basically the same part, um, except one of the guitars is also doing a little bit of uh, melodic work between the riffs and whatnot. So I'm just going to highlight or just solo up guitar number one, and I'm going to pan it to the center to just make it easier to work with. So I'll turn it up a little bit. So here's what we got for the first guitar here. Okay, so let's open up our tape machine and just like all the other tracks, you know, everything is the same. We're just going to make sure we're not slamming the thing, but we're getting some pretty good signal. Now, keep in, keep in mind that when we talk about electric distorted guitars, you know, we already have a compression factor going on there, right? We don't want to over compress this. And again, tape is, is a form of compression. So we want to be a little careful about that, that we're not slamming it too hard. So again, I'm just going to try to get some, some signal going here. Okay, so right there, I can see already, to me, that's too much. Now, again, this is all, you know, personal preference and it's subjective. You can slam the tape if you want to, but again, I don't want to do that to these guitars. I'm going to dial back this input a little bit. I'm going to unlink the input and the output, turn down the output as well, and just see what we get. Okay, so that's where I want to be, right around 12 noon. We're right around 0 dB, going into the red a little bit as maybe we're hitting uh, hitting the guitar a little bit heavier. Now let's go over to the virtual uh, mix rack here. Let's go over to our, our, our VCC and let's see where we are as far as the um, hitting the console. So again, we're kind of hitting the red. You know, we're not completely pegged. So again, you, you know, a little, the harder you hit this, a little bit more coloration you're going to get, but again, I'm going to back it off just a little bit. And again, you can, you can do this however you like. There's no right or wrong to this. I'm just giving you kind of my standard kind of way of thinking about this. So again, I'm going to turn down the output a little bit. Okay, that's pretty good. Now we're going to go over to the channel strip here. And once again, I'm going to go over to the mic side here. Okay, so we can get the, the coloration of the transformer. I'm going to start off with the output turned down a little bit so I don't blast this out. Because remember, going to the mic line, it's going to be a lot hotter of a signal. We're going to compress. Now I'm going to just set up my compressor again. Kind of a standard way of looking at this. We're going to go with a slow attack. Again, I want the guitars to sit a little bit more forward. If I go to a fast attack, it's going to push it a little bit more back in the mix. But the guitars are, are you know, are um, an important part of this mix. Obviously, it's a guitar riff rock song. Okay, so I'm going to keep it at a slow attack. Again, on the ratio side, as I said earlier, the guitars already have compression. So I don't want to compress this too much at all. I'm going to go to like a two to one ratio on this. Um, because again, we're getting a little a bit of compression from the tape. We're getting a little bit of compression here, and then in the next section, when we get to the uh, when we get or a couple of sections down the road, when we start getting to adding additional EQs and compressors, um, we're going to do something else with this from a compression point of view as well. So again, we're going to be con compressing at several different stages, a little bit each way. So I want to be really careful about not over uh, squashing these guitars because again, they're already compressed to begin with. So we're going to do a two to one ratio again. We're only going to look for about three dB of compression. That's it. Okay. So let's start there. We'll take our, we'll take our filter here and we'll go up to about, you know, right around 80, 90 Hertz to roll off all the low ends. Okay. So here we go. Okay, so you can see we're hitting about 3 dB of compression. That's about it. Sometimes a little bit lower than 3 dB. The, the light's kind of flickering on and off. That's what we want. Two to one ratio. I've turned the fader back up on the output here to make sure that we, uh, we're getting enough uh, output signal here. We're not clipping anything like that. 
Um, and that should be pretty good. We could even probably push the input transformer a little bit harder here because it's not that hot of a signal to begin with. So we, let's try that. So that means we're going to back down the output fader. We're also going to make sure that when, if we turn up the input on the preamp, we're going to get a lot more compression. So we're going to have to adjust for our, um, for our threshold as well. Okay, so I'm pushing the preamp enough just to get the overlight kind of flickering just every now and again, you know, and then we'll back it off a tiny bit. Again, we don't want to hit this way too hard because we don't want to over compress it. I know I keep saying that, but on electric guitars, this is important. Okay, it's an important thing, as I think I might have said a few sections earlier, and I'll keep harping on this for my newbies. Um, one of the things that you can get into trouble with when you're mixing with analog style plugins is that you can over compress the hell out of everything to the point that by the time we get to the end of the mix, there's no dynamics left in the song. Okay. So, um, remember that. So I, I'm going to keep saying that I know it. And I know you guys are going to get, some of you are going to get angry with me, but again, that's my style of teaching. I want to make sure that you understand this concept because this is probably one of the more important concepts you're going to learn throughout this whole series is how these plugins affect your compression rate and how your compression rate can squash the dynamics and all the liveliness and make the track sound smaller as opposed to bigger. So we push up the mic preamp a little bit, just clipping it a little bit, and now we're gonna adjust our threshold to make sure we're not over compressing. Okay, so I adjusted the release back to make the, a quicker release to get that compressor off the note right away. And as you can see, I had to pull back the threshold quite a bit from where it was prior to boosting up the mic line input. And you can see that the 3 dB LED light, it's just kind of flickering a little bit. I think we're fine. Now for an EQ, we're gonna try to brighten up these guitars a tiny bit. I'm gonna raise the level back up. I'm gonna bring our level back up here. I'm gonna give a little bit of top end boost here. Just a little bit, not a lot. And I want these guitars to get brittle. So we're going to put a little small, maybe a small shelf on here, right around 5K. And we're maybe just going to give it a dB or two. So just a little bit of brightness on the top end. I'm trying to level match the plug in a little bit more. Um, and so that's why we're getting a little bit of a volume difference here, but not that big of a deal. I turned down the output a little bit. I turned up the mass, the, 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 the channel fader here. So I think that's pretty good. So now what I want to do now is these guitars, from the sound of it, is the same guitar played just twice. So what I'm going to do to save time is I'm just going to copy these settings from this channel strip, and I'm going to put it on the other channel strip, okay? I'm going to pan this guitar we just worked on all the way to the left, like we had it. I'm going to turn it back down a little bit. I'm going to bring the one to the right, bring it over to the center so we can hear it a little bit ease more easily. I'm going to turn up that volume. And we're going to turn on our tape machine and whatnot. We're going to copy and paste our settings over here on our channel strip, and we could tweak it if we need to. But let's check out our virtual tape, because remember, we got to gain stage it and hit this right now. We've got to gain stage this. Let's, let's mute the first guitar, shall we?
Okay, so now that I got them kind of dialed in, I got them panned again, hard left and hard right. That's what we want to do on this. And you can hear that each guitar in certain sections of the song or the riff here playing their little lead lines, which is cool. They're nice and separated. Um, and again, we're doing this all in the context of the mix to try to get them balanced. Okay, now if you think back to where we talked about in the last video, we talked about bass, we added this bass grit track. And if you remember, I said that where this is really going to help the bass cut is when we bring these electric guitars in. And now if I take away that grit and you're just listening to the, to the actual original bass, um, it tends to get lost in the mix. The grit is going to help get that bass to kind of cut through, to get the bass and the guitars to kind of be balanced to where you can hear them both and they have some clarity, but they're not sitting on top of each other. Okay, so listen to this example here. Turn up your speakers or your headphones. Again, I, I have to be careful with the level here so I don't clip the video to death. Um, I'm going to play back, keep continuing to play back this section of music, and I'm going to mute the bass grit track. I'm going to start with it muted. Focus in on the bass now that we got our guitars in, and listen to where the bass is sitting. And then when I bring the grit in, you're going to hear that upper frequency. You're going to hear it come through a little bit more. It's going to cut a little bit better. It doesn't even really sound like there's distortion on it. It just makes the bass have a little more clarity and kind of separates itself from the guitars a little bit. It's, and again, it's subtle. So go ahead and turn up your monitors, turn up your headphones, and I'm going to start with it muted and I'm going to bring it in. Try to focus in on the bass. Okay, hopefully you can hear that example there. It just gives that bass a little bit more pop, which is what we want. And again, how much grit or distortion you bring in, it's all personal taste. And again, we'll as we move through this mix, we will go back and tweak this a little bit. But now we're starting to get a nice balance between bass, drums, and guitar. Now let's talk about this last guitar here, which is guitar three, which I believe is just a solo section in the beginning and in the end. So let's just loop the end here, if we can. And let's hear what that one's doing. And again, it sounds like to me that it's the same kind of guitar, you know, whatever type of guitar was being played. Tonally, it doesn't sound much different than the first one, but let's take a listen to that. Here's this kind of solo section. Okay, so in this uh, in this example, instead of turning down the output of the tape machine, I just turned down the input of the of the console because the tape machine it looks pretty good. From a level perspective, okay, so you could do either one. Um, and now we're gonna go again over to the uh, to the to the SSL, and again we're gonna go over to the mic line of it. Um, we're probably gonna give a little bit of juice here. We'll do our compressor now on the lead guitar. Again, same kind of thing. It sounds like a real heavy humbucker, you know, heavy distorted lead, which is really cool. I'm gonna try to roll off stuff around 120 or so. I'll adjust this as we kind of play back. Again, we're gonna go with the slow attack here and we're gonna have a pretty quick release. Again, about a two to one ratio. We're not gonna overly compress. We're just looking for a little bit of kiss there. On the EQ side, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna give it a little bit of a shelf again as well. Maybe around that five, six K mark just to give it a little bit of brightness. And let's see where we're at here.
I'm going to compress a little bit heavier here on the lead guitar for a couple of reasons. One is because I'm not going to follow this up with another compressor in later sections like I am on the rhythm guitars, which we'll talk about in a bit. But also on a solo, it's going to be a little bit more dynamic, right? Because it's picking singular notes. Uh, so it's, it's going to be uh, a little bit more uh, heavy handed with the pick, which means you're going to have a little bit more uh, spikes going on on the transient. I want to kind of cut those out and even out that performance just a tiny bit. So that's why I'm going to do that. So I'm going to compress probably around three, you know, I'm just going to use my ears, no more than six dB just to get it nice and even. Um, and then again, I got a little bit of EQ here to brighten it up and we're just going to kind of let it just kind of sit it on top of the rest of the mix. So I'm bump, excuse me, bumping up a little bit more there. Um, about 6 dB here just to get the, the, the get the guitar to cut through those other two electric guitars. And again, we'll play with the balance after. But you can hear before and after the SSL. Before the SSL, it gets a little bit more claps. The SSL kind of thickens it up, brings it to life, makes it a little brighter. Obviously, we're doing a little bit of a bump and a roll off here too at around 120 hertz to get rid of any low end stuff that might be hanging around. Um, and that's our electric guitar sound. So if we just take a listen back to up to that point we just kind of listen and kind of now balance everything that we have so far let's do that So you can see there now I'm checking the guitar bus. Remember I said once we're done with a, a grouping of in, uh, an instrument set in the guitars, we're going to now make sure we're checking our buses. We're going to check our master bus. And as you probably heard or maybe didn't hear, but I'm going to point it out in case you didn't hear it, before I turned this tape machine in this uh, in the in the mix in the um, the VCC the mix bus part on the guitar bus. Listen to the guitars and listen how they get a little bit more present and a little bit more clarity when I turned on these two plugins. I don't know if you noticed that. But here it is, and I'm just going to turn on the tape machine, turn on the console. And again, I didn't do anything to the tape machine, just bumped up the input a little bit. We're running right around, you know, the 12 noon position. And the same thing on the mix bus. We're just running. We're not hitting it very hard at all. But listen to what happens when you just turn those two plugins on. Did you hear that? It's really subtle, but it just gets a little bit more present, a little more clarity and a little bit more, I don't want to say hi-fi hi sounding is probably not the right word, but that's the word that comes to mind. A little bit more polished, maybe. Very, very subtle. How it comes across in the video, I'm not sure. But you get once we get towards the end of the mix and we start turning all these plugins on and off, you're going to hear what a massive difference that this all makes. It's little accumulative improvements along the way.
okay, so it's starting to sound pretty good. You saw me check the master bus there to kind of just adjust the uh, the virtual mix bus, the VCC. Turned down the input a little bit. We're getting, like, starting to hit a little bit heavier than I would like, and I turned up the output to compensate. Everything else looks pretty good. We're still only getting about a dB or two of compression on the SSL, which is great. Um, one thing I'm checking here, though, is I hear when that guitar solo first comes in, that very first note kind of pops out a little too much. Um, and what I want to do is maybe just do, because, again, I don't want to compress. I don't want to change my compressor settings. Um, but what I just think I might do, it just sounds like it's a little too abrupt. I'm just going to hit it with a little bit of a fade. I mean, just a slight fade, just so it softens that note just a tiny bit. Again, that's a little trick you can use. If you just have one note that's kind of popping out, but the rest of it sounds fine, you can zoom in a little bit and we can see, we can just, 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 you can see as I'm moving the fading, you can see it right here, how it starts to just soften it a little bit. So I back it all the way off. Right? So let's hear what that sounds like. Better. So it doesn't hit you in the face too, too quickly. Um, and again, that could be something we could do in automation in the end, but that helps it out a little bit, okay? So those are our electric guitars. Now, um, in looking at this, I forgot we have a piano track here. <laughs> it's like, where is there room for piano in a song like this? But there is, and it's cool. So let's finish up with piano here. Okay, so the piano is only in different sections of the song, the intro, and then I think during the choruses it kind of goes away. Here's the loudest part of the, of, the, of the song for piano is down here, so we're going to kind of work on it down here a little bit. So let's see what we got for piano. And again, let's make sure we turn our plugins on here. And then we will go over to our bus, make sure we turn on our plugins here. Oops. Oh, it's not what I wanted to do. Uh, collapse. Okay. I want to turn it on. I want to open it up. Okay. So let's, let's take a listen to this piano and see what we got going on here. Okay, so here on the piano, um, again, everything prior to the channel strip was fine. The tape machine, I turned down the output a little bit to hit the virtual mix rack at a pretty conservative level. On the SSL, though, on the compression settings, I'm using a fast attack here. And the reason why I'm using a fast attack is going to achieve more compression because the piano is very percussive the way he's playing it. It's just single chords. Dong. Dong. And I want to really capture that transient. I want to tame it in so that so the, so the, so the beginning note when he hits that chord isn't jumping too far out in the mix. And then I want to hear the sustain of the piano. So by using a fast attack and a little bit slower release, it's going to hold on to that note a little bit. So we hear the sustain of the piano a little bit. So we, we tame the transient on the front end, but we hear more of the sustain again. So it'll sit nice or a little bit. You can hear it through all that electric guitar. And then over around 10K or so, I'm boosting up about 60B, putting a shelf just to get it a little bit brighter. Um, and that's where we're at. So here's what we got.
Okay, I just disabled the, just the compressor. Listen to how much louder that piano gets without the compressor. Okay, that especially those those initial those initial hits on the chords, they jump way out of the mix. So I'm going to demonstrate that. Now the EQ is set the same. I'm not turning off the EQ with the preamp. I'm just turning off the compressor. Okay, the compressor is really going to tame it. And then I'm going to turn up the output volume to compensate for the volume loss that I'm getting with the uh, with the compressor. Now also listen to the again to the sustain. Okay, we're looking for a more even hit we want it to be a little more dynamic on the front end and then sustain out nicely not this big jump and then it kind of drops right off okay so i'm going to start with the compressor disengage and then i'll enable it So on some of those heavier hits, we're doing about 6 dB of compression. So for now, we're going to leave this. Again, later on as we're bringing in other plugins, I might follow that up with another compressor just to kind of kiss the needle. So anything that kind of sneaks through, we can kind of tame a little bit more. I'm not really sure. But we have a really good starting point now. And we can always play with the volume. We can automate the piano volume a little bit. So once again, now we're going to go check out the piano bus as this is playing back. So we can make sure that the bus plugins on the piano bus um, isn't um, acting in a funny way. So I balanced it a little bit more, lowered the fader in the mix just quite a bit. And so it kind of plays a little bit nicer with the guitars. Again, we'll tweak this in a little bit later. So that is our electric guitars and our piano. So thanks for joining me for this section. Come on back for the next section where we're going to start to take a look at the vocals. We'll probably start with background vocals first and we'll move into the lead vocals. So I'll see you for the next section.